Any new invoices or purchase orders that need to be reviewed? The audience can't hear you. Gail, do you remember if we had a um, commercial account with Home Depot? Yes.
to this, the Foundry Street pump station level transducer failed. And therefore, they had to get a replacement for it. So it would fall under the uh, guidelines of an emergency, in my <coughs> estimation. Do you agree? Yes. That would have been nice to know if I can. OK. You mean like an estimate first? No. Like as in, okay, it's up there. It's coming. Oh, right. There are two of them there. One is like service, and one is the parts. This is the final payment for the oil canner contract. It was like $4,200. I'm sorry, why? Because we're still right? No, this was the asset management thing where John came in and did the presentation. That was part of that. You know the spreadsheet that was so small we couldn't read it without a magnifying glass? The one he used. Yeah. We had to restore That's what I thought. I just was checking. I was hoping it wasn't another one. No. Legal bill. This PO should go with the level at checks so that they can be filed with that purchase order. Seven percent of the year, which is what July would be. The water budget is tracking pretty close at 58 percent. The sewer side of this is high because of some repairs we had to do. The 
If you look at maintenance repairs collection system, the Lavalette invoice, mm -hmm. that was like $3,200. Well, part of that $3,200 was the Lavalette. So that's why that was increased. That's why it's high. Okay. Correct me if I'm wrong on this. Um, it says today, percent spent. Where are you? Right here. No, that's of the original proposed budget. After adjustment for the reductions the district voters voted on, it's 54 percent, 68 percent, 64 percent, 64 percent. Any questions? Up and down the line? No? Okay, Wright Pierce wants to do an evaluation, I suspect, of that pipe right there to find out its condition and to take a look at the tuberculation that's inside. And they have submitted a proposal for $1,000, which includes the lab test, the crush test, coordination, delivery, and a summary memo. I think for $1,000 to get more information, that's actually pretty cheap. Yep. So I'm going to sign it, and then I'm going to pass it down the line for you guys to sign it. OK? And I don't feel like we should sign it. Say so. inside of it and get us a report. Can I ask where that pipe is from? Can you wait? We'll, we'll have comments in a moment. I need to answer my colleague first. The reason why we're doing that is to see if there's another way of correcting the problem in the morning street. Correct. Which would be faster than digging up the street and replacing the pipe in this entirety. The structural, structural integrity of the pipe is okay. And with a lining, we can do away with some of the tuberculosis due to your data. What a correct regulation. It's a regulation of the system. But that, I, with the rest of the system in the town, I don't guarantee it will be complete. We may have some residual in some places. We don't know. We may have to do the same thing on other types in the system. But I'd like to know why, when they were doing a pig test, uh, whatever it was, a year or two ago, they only did half of it, never finished it. Who stopped it? And I don't know what the reports were. They were filed that a company did the work. Unfortunately, I can't answer that. I wasn't the commissioner. About that. Can I ask the same question? Can we try to contact the company and find out? We could do that, yes. Okay. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> the clerk's report of billing and delinquent accounts. There you go. If you look at this report and it says current, that's the most recent bill. The one that went out that was due basically today. Okay, so that's current. Age one, I believe, is I have another report. I believe it's sixty days overdue. H2 <coughs> well, hold on a minute. I've got a report here. Oh, I left it at home. No, here it is. We have 92 customers who are 30 days plus, but that's essentially a current bill. We have 21 who are 60 days, over 60 days for $13,694, and 
and we have one customer who's over 90 days, $405.11. I'm missing where, where am I missing? You won't see it on here, you'll have to use this one. This one is like a summary report of that. No, I see. <coughs> Do you have a file? of everyone who got a certified letter saying they were delinquent and they're facing a shut off? Pretty sure. Well, that's like pretty good. It's undoubtedly in the cabinet, so yes. I have okay. something like that. I'd like to review them. At the next meeting mind. or in general? Pardon? At the next meeting or in general? Uh, as soon as possible because I want to make sure that people are getting notified that they are on the verge of being shut off. And the certified letter. And we also need to tell people we have to do the thing with tenants about putting it on their doors because there's some people here who are very clearly um, their landlords not paying. And I can see one here that's sort of account number 354. Uh, this one's a chronic one. Okay. And. Unfortunately, we have to go. We have to go there, and we have to put notices on the uh, tenant's door, okay. which generally causes the large uproar. So I need somebody. One of us needs to review that to make sure that you know we're staying on top of this and making sure that people like that particular customer is warned well in advance that they're about to get their water shut off if they don't start paying up. Okay. All right. Are there any pending purchase orders that need to be reviewed by the commissioners? I don't say anything. Okay. I would at this time like to introduce Cynthia Clevens and Rick Karinka from the New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services, who requested to be at our meeting tonight. The floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Commission members. Uh, just for reference, uh, uh, um, uh, my name is Rick Skarenka, uh, engineer with the New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services and the Drinking Water Bureau. Uh, I manage the engineering and survey section, uh, and I am responsible for uh, regulatory oversight for uh, Rollinsford Water and Sewer. Uh, I have been out here before uh, on inspections uh, and somewhat familiar with the system. Uh, yeah, with me tonight is Cindy Clevens. Uh, Cindy's been engaged. Uh, she's an engineer in my section. Uh, typically, she's responsible for small system uh, oversight and management, but she's also an expert in treatment. And so she's been uh, fully engaged in the uh, arsenic treatment uh, that's been installed, uh, and also lead and copper issue that has been an issue, chronic issue with the district at this point in time. So t uh, we submitted a re uh, some items on the agenda. Uh, Our auditor. The um, you know to talk about tonight. I mean, this this the four items we submitted requests to talk about is, and and first of all, I, 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 is there time restrictions that we have? Uh, we'd like to be done tonight before midnight. If you okay, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I, I understand. I mean, I, I, I don't know. But um, <coughs> the four items are <coughs> Willie Street, <coughs> water quality issues, uh, 
daily operations and communications with your operator and staff. Staff, uh, you know, there's August 5th. There's a public forum that we've been invited to, uh, and also the fourth one is a sanitary survey uh, recommendations. And uh, just to let you know, we Cindy and I came out earlier today. Uh, we performed a sanitary survey, which is an inspection uh, required every three years of the water system, uh, and it's, it's, you know it was figured. Better time, best to do it now since we're coming out. We, and, and if there's any clearing issues, then and, you know, we can talk about uh, just give you a heads up. But um, you know, the, the good news is that uh, right now you're, you're in compliance with lead and copper, uh, which has been a chronic issue uh, going on in the past. And also, arsenic you're in compliance with too at this point. And that's been a struggle uh, you know, ongoing for, for years. Uh, and Cindy's been involved you know, since 2005. And, and quite frankly, the system is, uh, has been improved quite a bit, uh, you know. So I, I, I will tell you, I think uh, your operator is doing a really good job. All right, so. Was it the quorum, please? And, you know, we've been, we've been receiving a lot, you know, some comments, uh, email, phone calls, uh, you know, unsolicited about, issues that are going on here, um, and I, I'm not sure, they're, they're not going to get resolved tonight, but uh, I, I think it's important to realize a couple points that I want to put out there, is that one, the water system is not necessarily one individual's ownership, it's owned by the, all the customers, and so they, you know, they are the ones responsible, okay, and the second point to make is that, you know, we are in this together, meaning the state and the commission, and the water and sewer in this commission to provide safe, clean water to all the customers in Rollinsburg and, and the state is our responsibility. But we're in this together. So if, if you're not successful, then we're not successful. And, and I, the last thing to say about that aspect is that we're walking, and I think, hand in hand down this path to provide safe, clean water. Sometimes we have to drag people kicking and screaming, but the goal as far as we're concerned, is to provide safe, clean water to the public. That being said, so uh, that being said, uh, Willie Street, uh, you know, to touch base on that, we went out, uh, we've seen the pipe, we've got comments back. Uh, you know, there's there maybe some short-term solution, uh, maybe a long-term solution, uh, but I, I think it's uh, the, the best thing is to okay have a plan going forward, both short and long-term. Uh, we, we have a financing program. We're very familiar with how water districts finance capital improvement projects. I'm not here to talk about, we're not here to talk about that tonight. We can go back at a later time to talk about that. We did converse with your operator today and about the financing options, not specifically about one thing, but it's just something we run through with any operator to get them informed so they can then inform their commissioners, and also become familiar with the programs, too. Uh, they, um, you know, the, the Willie Street, uh, I guess, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of people here tonight who have some issues with, with what's going on. Uh, the, one of the things that we want to make sure is, is the water safe to drink. And by doing that, we, we could do that by taking, you take a bacteria sample. And that's really the, the, our benchmark that we use to make sure that the, the, it's safe to drink and, and you test for total coliform and E. coli. Um, it, you know, water in a lot of communities is, is gets, it's discolored for one reason or another occasionally uh, and people, you know, are people becoming much more, how would I say, um, uh, not willing to accept the status quo. Uh, we see this across the state. Uh, we have aging infrastructure in every community water system. Uh, that they're, they're happy to address. So, is this a unique situation for, for Rollinsford? No, it isn't. Okay, but uh, it's front and center for the people that are drinking the water um, at this point in time. Uh, you know, I, I guess I, I question, um, you know, there's a concept of a short term solution and then there's long term. DES is not in a position to dictate, you know, what you choose as solutions. But we are aware of what options there are. Obviously, the long-term solution, you know, could be pipe replacement. And we just discussed 
all these options with Ray this afternoon, um, and we you know we discuss some short term options. Uh, what I, I like to hear, I, at this point, what is the plan for the commissioners going forward? If, if you do have a plan, and I know you, you just approved a contract for Wright Pierce to evaluate the pipe, uh, which could then give you information to, to develop a plan. Is that the uh, what, what is the timing on that? Um, sorry. I'll ask, I'll direct my questions. You mean the results from right here? Yeah, what did, did they say? When would they get back to you? They didn't give us a time frame. What's the expectation of when they would get back to you? A matter of weeks at the most. Okay, yeah. I mean, obviously time is a critical nature, that's all. If people have you know, been drinking the water. One of the things we're facing also is the current budget, which is fire commissioner. Right, we're involved in making, we're not making any appropriations for the repair of Wood Street. There's nothing in there for that to take care of that at this point in time. We picked up the loose ends on that. We're getting nailed for it now. And people push on the wrong buttons. And it goes back to people before us that didn't plan it out to see where they were going. I, you know, there's, I get, uh, there's a lot of things that should have been done years ago, okay? Uh, so, I, I mean, and, you know, so I, I think there's a lot of other things that could have been done, too. Uh, I think at this point, I mean, unfortunately, it's in your lap at this point in time. Unfortunately, right. You know, I mean, and, and to say, if, if, you know, we don't have enough money for it, uh, you know, maybe you have to evaluate, you know, uh, other things in the budget. I, 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 again, I, I don't want to delve into that specifically, because I don't know the budget, you know. I have a budget to look at. Here we go. We can, we can give you the 737, we can give you the uh, we'll state. We're getting also for the portal world, we're getting nailed for John Don Sullivan as well. For money that was allocated in the budget to take care of that. We have another thing to lay on that at this point in time. We have no plans on starting anything or suddenly purchasing purchase laws or anything. So we don't know what's going on at this point in time. Well, I, I guess. $47,000 there at this point in time. You know, okay, you, you've made it, you, you had some discussion about. Uh, and I get a pressure on this, okay? Right now, it, it, this is like a very dysfunctional family, okay? And I have no problem saying that publicly. Because, okay, hold on, because earlier you discussed this proposal and you asked the question, well, what, what is it going to tell us? The fact that you didn't even engage your operator in a discussion on that, I, I think is, I, I, I don't think is very good. I, I beg to differ with you. Did you Chris Berg was here. He was the one who suggested the, op the, the superintendent said, let's take a piece of the pipe. He was the one who suggested it, and we're just signing the contract to have Wright Pierce take care of it and evaluate it. I, so I he guess, was involved. I guess I'm saying I, I, there were some questions, and someone's going to call somebody. No, no, to, no, that's no, all. The prior contract was out there. They were taking the pipe to the thing. A year or two ago, Dennis, was it? Something like that? And then it was all done. December of 17. It was never finished. Is there a report on that anywhere? I have information if you'll allow me to speak. And, 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 and again, I, I think we're, I, I don't want to get it finished. That's all. I, 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 and that's, I, it just shows you, I mean, you've you got to engage your operator in, in the discussions in these meetings. I have to say it's a two way street. Information could come back to us as well as to him. We will talk. We should be able to get down here and talk to him. And we can be two of us and not make a decision and not be accused of having a, me, a meeting that's yeah, illegal meeting. A legal meeting. This one's been going on with some of this stuff. I, I know. Facebook even, and you know, we're frustrated. We're and I, and I, I understand, Bob. Even, you know, the, just in the 10 minutes or 15 minutes or, you know, the half hour I've been here, it's, it is a two way street. And I think everyone should be polite and respectful for everybody. Okay? Yeah, I, at least civil. Uh, well, I think that no, we should be respectful. Okay? Yeah, too. So I, I think it's both, both, you know, both sides. Okay? So, I, and I'm not here to, uh, you know, chastise. I mean, it just, it's, it, in a half hour, it just, uh, it's, it's, I don't think it's been very productive, you know, from my standpoint. Because I think you're losing... Uh, the value of, of talking to your operator and then conveying information. And I think that the same vice versa, the operator is maybe losing something not being able to converse to you. 
So, I, and I, I might, I don't think I'm gonna, I'm obviously, I'm, it's not gonna be fixed tonight. Okay, uh, this this issue with, uh, with your operator and the commissioners, you know. But it is, I, I think that's causing a lot of problems uh, that are unnecessary. Uh, I think it's causing a lot of, uh, how would I say, uh, uh, uneasiness with the public uh, and the trust they have in you. And so it's going to make your job a lot more difficult. Uh, you know, uh, it, it's just, I, I, quite frankly, I haven't seen a situation like this in 30 years in my career. And, and so I'm not sure where we go from here. Right? How many people do you have working? Me? Yeah. 14 people. 14. How would you feel? And I'm sorry, what, what is your name? My name's Bob. Okay. How would you feel if we went to your people and started talking to you about your business and asking them why you do this, that, and the other thing? Okay? Correct me if I'm wrong, but you're in an advisory and inspection business. Yet, you didn't speak to us at all. You spoke to our operator, knowing full well, because you just told us, that there were difficulties there. Never got the second side of the story. It's a very good point. That's why I'm here tonight. This should have been done just like a just like a personnel issue. That should have been done in, in private. And you had the opportunity. Okay. Well, we, we did. Wait, 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 wait. I have an opportunity. Okay. I, I think there's some people behind you who want to make some comments or say some things. Do you mind if they sort of jump into this? That's fine. Wow. Yeah. No, no turn. You, you can. Oh. Yeah. You've got to respond to them. Okay. Frank, Frank Roselli? All right. Well, I got a question. For me or for the Well, I wanted, to, I wanted to bring something up. Okay. He's brought up that there's a communication gap. Ever since, you know, I, I went away and you guys came in, there was no communication between Ray and you. And there's been a wall. And there's been legal. And there's been this and that. Could we start taking baby steps by maybe letting Ray answer the question about why did we not pay? When when you stand when you sit up there and you say, oh, I have no information about this, I raise my hand and you move on. There's information out there, you're not willing to take it. You're not willing to listen to it. You spent a ton of money with the engineering firm, $4,200, $4,300 to get the same answer as you had from the first engineering firm. You pay. You spent a ton of money for. for you're spending tons of money for legal stuff. That's eight thousand dollars. That's not fixing the water problems. Bob, you, you, you seem like you want to say something. Okay, no, 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 Bob. Just don't get his comment. There's information out there. Why don't you let Ray answer the question right here and now about picking? I'd like to see the report from the engineering company. That's all I want to see. That's what I'm going to read. If you can provide that, I'd be glad to see it and read it. Why, can't, is, you, why can't we talk in a forum before? I'd like to read it before we discuss it. Why? What do you, so what do you have information. information? You want us to make a decision. But the problem is... But the public should be aware. Let me give you an example. No, what, no, 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 no. We asked for a report. The report doesn't get here until the day when we're sitting here. We're sitting up here shuffling papers. We get paperwork coming in. Are you, are you afraid you're not going to look well, good for the cameras? That open the right. forum. Okay. It's got nothing uh, to do with them. Let, let the chairman direct the it's, it's, it's got to do with, it's yeah. got to do with the information is supposed to be to us in a timely fashion. Raymond, if you have the report, I'd like to see it. Yeah. There wasn't an engineering firm that did the ice pick, and I just want you to understand that. It was Suez um, that, that performed it, and they're a company that offers multiple products, one of them being lining and the other being ice picking. The reason they came on board with the ice picking is because we started with a conversation of lining. And I'm more than, I've got the information I can share it with you right now. That's yeah, and we know of Suez. It's a, a vendor of a product. We in other words, a salesperson. So, um, you know, is it an independent uh, third party evaluation? Uh, not necessarily. Um, you know, but what with right peers that you and you're, you're going to enter into, they will provide you with a, I call it an independent third party. So I, I think it, you know, it, it is a good idea to get some, uh, you know, a consultant who's very familiar with what's going on and give you some some direction on the on the, on the line. You know, the line is is, I mean, I, I it's not a big line. 
you know, I say in comparison to what projects, a thousand feet plus or minus. But but the other thing I, 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 I you know, it raises, so if you're undertaking something, you know, maybe you should, is there anything else you should do at the same time? Because, uh, again, it, it's not to say that we shouldn't solve the problem right away, but, uh, I, you know, money is very critical. Um, but at the same time, the investment you're making, you know, when you put a pipe in the ground, that's that's going to last a, hopefully over 50 years. So no, the newer pipes are lined also. It could last 80 years. So which is a, you know, so you got to look, you know, consider that. And then, you know, I, I think having a, a good discussion about the, you know, what's the options and and things like that is is a, a valid. And and if you if you discuss it in the public forum, then the people can hear a bit what you're talking about too. And I'm, I'm not, again, I'm walking in here tonight, uh, you know, not having the benefit of attending previous meetings. But we did sit down with Vern and have a discussion with him. So it's not like I'm, I'm coming in here without having had any contact before. Right? Um, I, I think if, if we can improve relations just a little bit, I, I think it's going to benefit everybody. You, public, uh, and, and the operator. We, we, we see... Okay, and we've seen your, your operator has done, I, I think he has done a, a really good job, okay, more than uh, previous operators. And I don't know if there's any previous operators here uh, in the room or not, but the bottom line is if, if he's brought you into compliance, uh, you're in compliance today, uh, which is a good thing. Uh, the, you know, my concern is that you can, you know, tip fall back out of compliance. And, and what that means is that you end up getting letters from us, uh, and as I said, we don't own the system, but we do have regulatory oversight on the system. And, and so we, we, we do have authority. Again, and I, we don't, I don't like to get down those paths, okay? But sometimes, we, you know, it, it, it takes, we have to come back and, and, and really ask the tough questions. Cynthia, well, did you want to add to this conversation? Because <laughs> you got off the quad. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, w I would. Thank you, uh, Vern. I've been working with Rollins for since 2005. So since Jad Hadlick was here, your initial uh, arsenic treatment system, when I came on board at the state, I do have about 30 years uh, in the environmental field in uh, water treatment and uh, I'm a chemical engineer by training. So that is what I provide to not just to Rollinsford but, but other systems, both in the corrosion control and the arsenic in particular. So I do want to clarify and, and emphasize that the, the work that Ray has done, and we have been working very closely these past two years, is above and beyond what any of your previous operators have done. So I don't want you to uh, waste this valuable resource or maybe push him out of here because this is the best we've seen the, the system since I've been involved. Uh, we, we brought the, the, uh, the porter treatment into, into uh, compliance, that's with the 10 PPV MCL and now we've just adopted a new MCL so additional uh, oversight, better monitoring Close to monitoring, which he, he has requested uh, of you for planning purposes, that will help you to meet the new MCL of 5 PPP because this is about public health protection. Wait, wait. So you're throwing a lot of jargon around. You're talking about arsenic levels dropping from 10, 10 to, to 5, five. Mm -hmm. in two years' time, but the sooner, and actually right. with the work that has been done so far, it, you are even in compliance with the 5. The, the, the amount of the, the right, the so, oversight needed, okay. and the monitoring right. of the chemical feed is extremely important. Right. So I want to put in the comment that the request for the monitoring improvements are critical to your production, to your meeting of the standards. So. Now, are there is there anyone in the room who wants to pose questions or comments to our friends from DES? This is your chance. Go ahead, Angela. Thank you, Angela Matthews, 437 North Street. I don't want to say that. So my question for you is about the financing uh, opportunities that may be out there. I know we need a short-term fix, but how can we um, get into a queue for a lower interest rate than we might find in a public bond? Um, what kinds of programs are available to the town of Rollinsburg? And um, 
And I know that there's some income qualifications issues as well. But the people in the district are of lower income than the people on the surrounding edges of the district, which skews our median income. So there's that to factor in. But I'm just curious about what kind of support we can get in terms of seeking out financing for long-term solution. The, uh, in, in, in my section, we have embedded in a low interest loan program. It's called the Drinking Water State Revolving Loan Fund. And uh, we provided Vern, you know, our, our current <coughs> rates. I mean, this isn't a sales pitch. Uh, it's it's just what we do. Uh, and and so the current <coughs> loan for a 20-year term uh, interest rate is 2.37 percent. Uh, and, and you know, so we we just concluded our solicitation for the uh, next year's round of financing projects for projects. We had 165 million in request, and we have 20 million available. So it's very competitive. Uh, if you just say, you ask me, well, how would this situation, if you were to come in, and let's say uh, it costs 200,000, 250,000 to do a new water main, and if you were to apply to our program, uh, you know, would you rank up at the very top? And the answer is no. Uh, you wouldn't rank up at the top, all right? So, um, but that's not to say that uh, you, it, the application, you, you can apply, there's no commitment uh, on the, by the boards. Uh, you don't have to have authority to borrow at that point in time. Uh, but unfortunately, we've, we've that, that window is closed this year. Uh, but there are other financing opportunities. When will that window open again? Uh, next June. Ne a year from now, a little less than a year from now. Mm -hmm. yeah. USDA and Bond Bank will open in January. That's correct. You can go sooner than next year. That's correct, and you can go uh, private loan institute. You know, borrowing, which has been, uh, you know, an op is option now. There's some local. You can talk to a local bank. Uh, you know, you can get relatively inexpensive. It also depends on the term. You know, but again, that goes back into what what your option, long, you know, your long term option is. All right. You can be assured we have been investigating them carefully. Yeah. There are rules and regs related to this, and. I mean, like interest, anything, for an interest rate chart is it nice. Has, it has come with rules and regs. Comes with conditions, of course. Yeah. Federal dollars. Uh, there's uh, you know conditions that come with that. So um, you know, but but the other thing is you're making an improvement. If you're going to replace the water main, then with, regardless of whether you're going to finance yourself, uh, you're going to use your lottery winnings, take word, whatever. You told. Okay. Um, okay. Who told? All right. Uh, you know. Uh, you know, we still want to see, you know, we want to have it designed, okay, because what that does, it takes away any liability. Uh, you know, there's other utilities in the street. Uh, you want to have it designed by an engineer, okay, and, and DES would, would approve, okay, so so when you're doing a water main improvement project like this, okay, if pigging, no, uh, you know, repairs, no, we don't get it. Routine repairs and maintenance? Yeah, right? no, no. But can, where can I find the regulations and criteria for this, this loan? Because I know where the yep. bond bank is, I know where USDA is, I know where private lenders are, like Northway Bank. I need to know Very happy to, yeah, to go through them with you, to, yeah. to put, uh, send you the link, to, to send the you the link uh, for, the for both the SRF requirements and, uh, and the uh, design standards for the uh, subject to, and happy to explain it. Yeah. Okay, if you can yep. send it to yep. Commissioner at Longsford Water Sewer, or yep. don't send it to my personal account, please. No, I don't think I have it. That's fine. Oh, yeah, you do. Yeah, do. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. We can send so that then, uh, you know, there are plenty, I mean, again, that's uh, when you come up with your, your solution of, of what you're going to do, then you would look at the financing options. At, at, at that, long that's, time. that's right. Yeah. But also, in addition to that, though, any other, it's good to know about the financing options because there'll be, I, I can guarantee you, we, we've spent some money today, or we've made some recommendations that you may need to spend some money on today. And I'm not, I'm not going to it. But, um, but long term, you know, long did you make those recommendations? <laughs> Well, Today we had the this, this three-year sanitary survey inspection. Okay. So we go to each facility and review, and then a letter will come out uh, that will yes. provide to the commissioners to and your operator. Yeah. But the discussion the was with, with, your, with, your, yeah, with, yeah, this is, this with Ray, is and obviously we didn't have time to write anything up, but uh, a formal letter will come uh, like every three years, okay, okay. You know, with, 
you know, recommendations and things like that. Okay. Um, but other capital improvements in the future will need also. So it's also, it's good to, at some point you're going to need more improvements, you know. Yeah, putting the right here is, yes, we get that. Like one, yeah. yeah but we also owe roughly $900,000 right now in bonds. 866000 okay. And we have a limit that we have to go to. We don't have much more. Based on your debt borrowing authority? Yes. Yeah. Right. And that, that's what puts a crimp on everything that our peers wants to do. Yeah. And I, I think the nice little head do everything. I mean, I live in this town and people say, what do you ask us? I, 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 but where's the money going to come from? Yeah. Can we get relief from that? Well, that's what, for some legal legal expert no. to, uh, to answer that question. So I want to answer. I want to answer what the question of, of about the income uh, the, the, of the residents of the district versus overall town income, median household income. Uh, what is done is an income survey, and that's done by a third party. It's confidential. Uh, there's no cost to it. It's uh, so we've provided information uh, to Ray on that, uh, and we'll provide that information you really to you. Need to provide you that can to us. To all of you, you're one. We're all Burn. one team, is what well, we're we trying to say. It. You we just it into Ray, but you no, we it just into discussed us. it this <laughs> afternoon. Burn. And these are things that we discuss every day with we, water, with the we, water system. This is our role. It, it, it's also it's to inform not only the operator, okay, but also the commissioners. Today we've talked with Ray for three or four hours over all this stuff, okay, and that's what we should be doing, okay. So the fact that we didn't talk to you, uh, it, it, you know, don't feel slighted, okay? Because we could, we were willing to come back and talk further to you about this, okay? It's just not today, and we didn't have no time, okay? But I think, but and we are thing, talking to you today. Yeah. So, so to finish the income survey, that can be done. There are third parties that will do it at no cost. So that that is is helpful for any of the funding for RD, for uh, SRF, and for CDBG if, if, for those funding yes. sources. So but I, I that can be done over the next year. Yeah, but my my own I would say on that though is that you're going and you're into people's you're going to be asking people what they earn for income. You're not going to be asking them. It's an independent third party. But I think an important thing aspect of this is if they know what you want the information for, you'll be very helpful. Because if you say, well, why, why do they want that information? You know? Well, because they may be doing something. Well, if you have something specific and you're targeting, I think that's going to be very helpful. That's it. Okay. Yep. So I, I understand it. I, I see some problems with it. But that's a discussion for another day. Yeah. Okay. Is there anything else? Yeah. You, you have a person behind you who wants to. I do. So, um, and you are, that so that they know who you are. Yeah. Sure. I'm Jennifer Lentz, uh, 439 Prospect Street, which breaks off of uh, Willie. Um, I, I have a couple of questions. One is, I, I don't believe, and maybe you reviewed the study from Wright Pierce last month, they made a recommendation to get an independent survey. I don't believe, is your recommendation? It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Yeah. So these guys have known about this for a while, I guess is what. Yeah, it's okay. the same thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the other question I have for both you and Rick is you shared that this is a fairly, uh, say, I think you categorized it as a dysfunctional family. Well, um, in the first half hour. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, it, and it I, hasn't and really I saw improved. some things that I, I wasn't real comfortable with. And it so. hasn't really improved, right? And I can well, say no, I think it's improved in the last 15 minutes, quite frankly. I really do. I mean, it, we're, we're, we're having a dialogue, which is an improvement. The two of you are. Well, no, I, I, think, I think the commissioners in here would have to say too. So, at least if, if, we, if anything, we're breaking the ice and we can start a dialogue. I'm, yeah. I feel we can accomplish that. It's great. If you guys are here all the time, I think we'll have this type of behavior. <laughs> I, but um, my question for you is what would, your, what would your top three recommendations be based on best practices that you see in other districts between the operator and the commissioners? What are some, like your top three? three best practices that you see um, that are happening that may be a gap here in Rollinsburg? Well, I, I, it, it's one. It's communication. And can you I, I, have, I mean, we don't have to go into it. Okay. I mean, it'd be just, you know, communication. You come to a, a, a meeting with commissioners, 
uh, you know, that's the opportunity to have the dialogue back and forth. You know, uh, you know, the, in theory, the, the operator should be sitting, uh, you know, maybe up on the side and, and then and talking out of the dialogue. I mean, that's what other, you know, districts and, and you think yeah. about selection mm -hmm. and, or whatever, too. But Unfortunately, what we've seen, what these residents have experienced over the past few months is the commissioners telling him that he may not speak. Um, so that's that's a challenge for us as customers who know that Ray is taking care as the operator and superintendent. He can't speak to us. They yeah. said that he's not a member, he's not a rate payer, so he's not allowed to speak. Well, I, I, I'm not going to get into that uh, aspect, of it, but I, I, you know, I, I think communication is probably the best thing that can happen here. You know, good communication. So. Yeah. And maybe the second thing is that we need to address the Willie Street uh, uh, water quality issues, which you have been taking care of with the flushing, with the pigging two years ago. The reason it wasn't pigged twice was because of the cost of pigging, and that one time they provided, you know, it provided the cleaning that it, that it did. But ongoing, there's been uh, very uh, frequent flushing to address the complaints. And then the, the, another thing to, to keep in mind is that the operation of the wells has to do with this because, and that's, we brought this up, uh, I, I think, a, a few times, is that, you know, the timing of either you, you run both well houses all the time or uh, or you don't run the quarter house at all. So over the winter, you ran, um, I think, mostly at General Sullivan, and, and, that, and that was fine, but when you bring on quarter, then you need to run it at least, you know, on a consistent basis so that you have consistent water quality out in the system. So the the, uh, the operation of the wells also has to do with the water quality issues. And who should make that decision? Th this, this is the decision that your certified operator is, is that is why they're certified, so that they can so make the that decision. Be so or what? It, here's, I'm glad you brought this issue up because that was a bone of contention here a couple, about a month and a half ago. That well wasn't being used because it's hard to run and it requires manual activity every day. So when we got the nasty grant from you guys from last year that they were overdrawing the well long before we got here, I said, listen, there's a simple simple solution to that. Run the border well up to three days a week. But so up to three, three days a week, depending on how much you're drawing off, so that we don't damage the aquifer. Yeah, the, you, the, the then, water use reporting actually that was correct. That it was it was a, a reporting issue, so you were not, and, and that was explained to you from the water use uh, program. Correct. That was long, long before we got here. So, so the solution to that is exactly what our concern was. That we're not running that enough to keep that thing up, right. and by doing that, and we got battle with it. So that's but the direction, the but your your direction to run it three days a week is not, not three days, not three days. one day a week, up to including up zero, to three, up to zero, which no. is not a good thing. So it's either consistently producing so you're saying or it not, be at all, not at all, not at all, right? Because okay. you need that oh. uh, consistent that's water quality. We much prefer that. Yeah. Well, now wait, wait. I, I got to clarify. Is, yeah. When you we talked on the twenty second, you said at a low level, but all the time. So either all the time or not at all, right? So that you well, have consistent water quality. Wait a minute. I was led to believe, based on what you said, that you could sort of, I don't know, throttle back the well pumps so that they, no? That's, that's, that's a, 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 what you have to, to ask your operator. How can they, he operate that facility? Okay in the best way possible we're, because we're get into there's the chemical monitoring, yeah. there is the fl flow meters, there's all those things. So running it at 40 GPM versus 80 GPM might be the same effort, you know. So th those are those are purely okay. operational considerations. That, that's and, a and the need to have that. You know, Glenn, about the SCADA system, my, you know, any additional information uh, is helpful for the operator, uh, you know, because you can get real-time information. Because the bottom line is if you want to make it, uh, if there's a hiccup, uh, you can't wait for someone to call and say, I'm getting burned in my skin because of an overfeed or, uh, you know, I have no water at all. And that's the thing. That's what a SCADA system now, and, and they've become much more affordable uh, in the last 10 years. And so uh, it's just, again, 
having more real-time information and, and more information to offer the system is, is just the way things are going. You know, technology has allowed us to do that. Right. Although, uh, that would help cut down the manning of the plant too. Yeah, that remote. exactly right. Did the budget, the item in the budget for last year, take that into account? The SCADA system? The Warren the war article that was approved. That's there, right? That's yeah. there. That has that. Yeah. 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 Okay. There's a signal. Well, holding a number and then getting an engineering yeah. thing done, That's a, those are two very different yeah. things. But. Well, the yeah, question here that gave us the price, just so we understand, right? Pierce gave us that price. That did, that came out of the asset management study. But it's a guess. It's not a guess. Well, then I don't. Where's the engineering study that says we're going to need this piece of equipment, that piece of equipment? It's going to take a six months labor time, and these are the sketches that we're going to use. Where is that information? All right, that's the next step. Once we decide to then move forward, then that's what we're going to do. We're going to take the next step. Okay. Um, but I just want you to know the price that was presented came from right here based on the specific items and out of the study with their understanding of the facility. Well, the, can, can we bring this to a close yeah. because we have our auditor here and I promise him. Why? 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 We're, we're getting somewhere for the first time in I five know. months. We have the state here. The state's here. They can answer questions. You're being disrespectful Go ahead. to the state. Uh, Vern, I, I think the, um, you know, there's August 5th we've been invited to the um, public forum. Uh, and uh, you know, the first thing I, I said, for, uh, you know, was I looked on the agenda, you know, where's, you know, where's the, where's the commission here about this? Because it's the future of, of Brawlinswood Water and Sewer. Uh, and we had a discussion in-house, uh, and we, we engaged our wastewater uh, partners to with the DS. Uh, and, you know, I think, so we, we were allowing a, a staff to go participate in this forum. But my, you know, what, what I don't want to have happen is the public puts our, my staff in, in a difficult position and, and asking for opinions about things. Uh, so it's going to be very difficult for them to participate. And I know this isn't, but, um, you know, but it's just unusual, you know, to have something like this. Um, but uh, we are going to participate. Cindy's going. Uh, I don't know if uh, Luis is going or not. But uh, you know, and, and uh, I think it's uh, you know, hopefully we, we're going to convey information on facts. Uh, and if someone asks us about typical operations, uh, you know, as best we can, we'll answer the information. But we can't say specifically about you know our opinion about the operation here. At, uh, or the other some things about well, Wallace. Yeah. Yeah. Right, free association, yeah. you can go or not. Well it, well no, I, I and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to get in front of the commission is too, is just to let you know that we are you know, we are gonna participate, but uh, I wanna have you know a direct contact, you know, uh, with with commissioners. Direct contact. Oh, this you mean. Well with with no with you John. You know. Not with you have any <laughs> well we we've had contact you but yeah. You know, I said if, if there's any, you know, you know, concerns or issues, what uh, I'm not sure what uh, we mentioned about. You may have on your own forum, but uh, again, I I don't know if that's been you moving forward with that. No. Okay. Th this uh, is the forum. Yeah. Okay. Uh, as far as getting public comment uh, during your, these meetings, uh, are you? Open to having public comment. We're Last open to having great. comments, not arguments. Okay. And if we go back and we look at the videos, we see them not as comments or questions, but as arguments. Yeah. And we want to keep that to a, the argument part of it to a minimum. And and typically, and, and DS has no jurisdiction over this, by the way. But it, it just, you know, it, it's good to hear from your constituents. Uh, any concerns and, and things like that, and, and hopefully answer questions. At the last meeting, we had some great questions, particularly from the folks in um, Willie Street. I live right around the corner. I suck up the same crappy water, so I know what the problem is. <laughs> yes. A lot of that. So I, I know what the problem is. I also know not everything comes for free cash, and nothing has been done. The flushing that just occurred, occurred finally 
after over a year of not flushing the hydrants. Every yeah, place yeah, I, I own property. property. Okay. Every, every place I own property. Different towns, different systems. They do at least twice a year. It hasn't been done in a year. Now all of a sudden, the water's flushed. Day after you were there. Wait a minute. I see a hand in the back. That's not good. Gail. Hi, Gail Sangalier. We um, in 2017, it was a commission for Willie Street. The commissioners met with all the people from Willie Street and they put a plan together. Their plan was that they were going to do the pigging and keep flushing and in a couple of years then get a plan together and fifty thousand dollars was put into fund balance in twenty seven to twenty eight twenty seventeen left over money into twenty eighteen. They were gonna again in twenty eighteen going into twenty nineteen put in more money. So there was a plan. We all retired, a bunch of us, in, 20, in May. And I don't know what happened to the plan or what happened to the money, but I guess I'm tired of hearing that nobody has done anything. We've done, we've done work on Willow Street. What, whatever happened to that work, whatever happened to reports, whatever happened to meeting minutes, I don't know, but I'm tired of hearing that nothing was done and no money was put aside. There was money put aside, I don't know where the money is, and I don't know what happened after that. But work was done for Wall Street. Frank, can you share this with Dennis? Dennis, do you really want to say something? Uh, no. no. Okay. Frank? So, in Frank Roselli, 464 Stockton Circle. So, the money. As, as time went on, Gail, if you remember, we ended up, we'd gone through four different operators who would work for us for a while and then weren't interested or were concerned about their licenses for whatever reason. So the money ended up, get, some of it got consumed by hiring Ray, some of it got consumed by hiring the other operator. And then a new budget came out that was going to correct some of these problems and put some money towards future projects. The new commissioners that came in, their goal was to cut the, cut the budget, and they did so by 80000 I have to interject, not the one voters did it, not the commissioners. Thing. We've got to stop that belief that we control the votes. Not we do not. Okay, the people that voted. Not Thank you. one penny was cut from the water budget. There was 50000 cut from the sewer and thirty cut from admin. Not one penny was cut from the water budget, and when I retired in May 11, 2018, that $50,000 was still in the fund balance. So, 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 I'll, so, I'll so I'll continue. Hmm? We, we really do have to bring this to an end, because we can't solve all the problems no, tonight. But it's, sure we can. No, we can't. We won't. We don't have the time. We've got to get to our auditor. So, the question that I have right now is, you made the comment that we have done no flushing for one year. I would like to ask Ray to report system-wide flushing. I would, ask, I would like to ask Ray about the flushing. I'd like Ray to be able to answer that question. Instead of pointing the finger, it would be nice if we could talk back and forth about it. Is that fair? That's good. Okay. Do you have the records to show when you flushed the entire system? They don't have records now. You didn't request a week in advance like you asked me to request, right? Yeah, okay. right. They know. I hate to go back and forth that way. Yeah, it's just frustrating, though, because they know the answer because I've sent memorandums to them, and they've got information on this. There's been plenty of dialogue about flushing, and to, to pose it like, if do I have records to prove it? We've talked about it through email and memorandum. Well, I've tried to share it with you with very little response or false response. Willie Street's been on a flushing cycle I, let me answer first. Willie Street's been on a flushing cycle with me on demand. Every customer on Willie Street has my direct line. They contact me when there's an issue. When there's an issue, I go out immediately and flush. That's where the system. That's where we're at right now with the Willie Street issue. There's no more. We flush every two weeks. It's on demand because what happened in between meetings is there was information not being passed on to me when water quality would diminish. 
So my assumption was water quality had gotten better, and when we had a follow-up meeting, it wasn't the case. So I gave everybody my information and asked them to contact me directly when there was an issue and I would come and flush. We installed a flushing hydrant on the low point of Willie Street to help reduce this issue, which has helped. We've added polyorthophosphate, which has helped, but it's proven to not be the ultimate solution. All of these were band-aids, and they were all discussed as band-aids for, for attempts to at least provide somewhat of quality water to these customers. Now, we got through the whole winter without any water issues. Again, Porter was not running. As soon as Porter got turned back on and was needed to run, we've started to see these water quality issues again. Since Liz and uh, Mary from Willie Street have contacted me over the last three months, I've been out numerous times. We did just do a hard system flush, directional flush on Willie Street a week ago. I just got a call before the meeting that Liz had a water quality issue again. That's the water that came out of the hydrant. So what I flush directionally as much as possible for extended periods of time last Monday, and we're back to this point again a week later. So the argument about flushing is going to correct this is, is obvious that it's more than just a flushing issue. Okay. To answer your question in terms of a system-wide flush, we did a system-wide flush, multiple system-wide flushes last fall. And I have plenty of data which I would love to share with you because we, we did the system-wide flush when we introduced the polyorthophosphate. And we had to get the polyorthophosphate in all the dead-end areas and throughout the whole system so it would work properly. And we flushed hydrant after hydrant, making sure that we, out, we reached all the outskirts of this town and also so that we saw the water quality get better on Lily Street than surrounding areas. Uh, I don't have a crystal ball as to why we're, we're moving back right now in terms of uh, the water quality, but it's definitely uh, to do with Porter and General Sullivan mixing. Um, but we have an issue that needs to be addressed, guys. As far, as, far as, the, 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 as far as how many times a water system should flush, uh, you know, there's recommendations that are provided. Some communities across the state, they only flush once a year. Others do it twice a year. Uh, and, and really, it's some, some communities do it uh, site-specific. If there are water quality issues, they do it more frequently to address, you know, uh, the, the complaints and things like that. So, uh, you know, these are recommendations. I mean, if, if there's no set cast in stone, oh, you, you shall do this every year or do it twice a year. But it's really a, a you know, uh, what the capabilities are, you know, it also has to do with uh, the conditions. If there's a drought condition, you don't necessarily want to flush because then you don't have enough water. So, uh, again. Okay. I really, uh, I, I, we've got to move. Hey, hang on. This poor woman in the back has been asking to ask a question for like 20 minutes. Thank Later. you. Appreciate that. Uh, my name is Liz Morganelli. I live at 21 Willie Street. I know a lot of you have probably seen my posts, heard from me. Um, I'm raising a bit of a stink these days only because I have an eight-month-old daughter that I'm bathing in this water. Um, a week ago, a little over a week ago, eight days, was the 23rd was when Ray did a bunch of flushing. We had the water up. It was great. I've had emails going back and forth with you guys. Um, it did clear up, it was great, and then I brushed my teeth with us before coming to this meeting. Um, we have a sediment, a whole house sediment filter on our water, and this still came through. Um, so that being said, I actually wanted to ask Rick a question. Um, you mentioned that there's people who are getting less and less comfortable with, I guess, the status quo of discolored water. Um, and I was curious what the status quo is for discolored water. Like how often should you be seeing, or in your experience, how often do people see discoloration like this? Like, what is the status quo? I'm just curious from your experience, and if seeing this every week is acceptable, or the status Well, obviously, I, I can tell you right away, every week is not acceptable, you know. Um, you know, how often people see it, um, you know, we, people get, um, you know, there's a lot, on social media now, it is really, people are, are communicating much more quicker and easier, uh, and, and so we, you know, we, so once it, something happens, it, it, it starts to it really substantially, you know, uh, grow. Um, as far as how often, 
you know, it really comes down to what the level of service that you as a customer expect from the water system. And I describe it like this, is it, so if I'm out of water, and I live in Concord, uh, you know, once a year, you know, is that a big deal? Most people say, no, as long as it's not Christmas Day when you have all your family, right? But then, let's change that to, what if it comes once a month? Is that acceptable? No. So somewhere in between, there's a level of service, all right? So I get, that's the way I would answer your question. I mean, what's your expectation uh, of, of, you know, receiving body water? It's not every day, obviously. It's not every week. It shouldn't be, okay? Uh, once a year, uh, that's really your choice. If you say, no, every single day, it should be crystal clear, uh, and that's what I expect, then that message needs to be conveyed to the commissioners, then that has to, they have to then provide that, that, what the, that level of service to you. And it may mean tripling the water rate in order to replace all the piping in the distribution system. I'm being kind of facetious, but I mean, this is, you know, so if I expect something, you know, nothing to happen, I, I get, you know, again, it goes to the level of service that you expect to be provided. And that's what the message should be conveyed to the commissioners, who then can then turn around and, and take that information and digest it and say, all right, this is what we need to provide. If, if you expect to be out of power once a year, is that acceptable? If someone said no, then you provide backup power, automatic transfer, and, and you know, which is what you have, okay? But it's, and it translates to water quality, uh, paying the bills, uh, you know, whatever you, you want, you know. So it's all about a level of service. And, uh, you know, obviously that water is not acceptable. Uh, you know, the question is, is it safe to drink? And every month they're taking bacteria samples uh, and they're adding a disinfectant. Um, so if anyone is concerned about, <clears throat> you know, is it safe to drink, we tell them, take a bacteria sample at your house and have it analyzed. And that's our benchmark that we use. Discoloring, it's, it's you know, what is that? It, it's tuberculosis, you know, it could be minerals that have been taking them on the pipe for decades. Uh, you know, are they harmful? Um, you know, it's, it's some, some case, you know, she, yes, there's, there's arsenic in the pipe you know, that is accumulated. So, what, because of your water quality, you have iron, manganese, arsenic, and because there's lead uh, uh, components in the system, historically, because we have, we've seen the detections, these all accumulate in the pipe scale, and, and you know, this is what happens. So when, when, um, when a particulate is released from the, from the water, you could have uh, unsafe levels, not just bacteria, but other unsafe levels, and that's why this is a critical issue to take care of, absolutely. You should not need to be drinking uh, uh, brown water, and so I think all of us together as a team, we, you know, this is an important issue to address. To evaluate thoroughly, uh, to figure out the funding options, and so that you can make a permanent solution. Because I think the flushing uh, and the pigging has been done for yeah. many years now, and and now it's time uh, to to have a more thorough solution. So, what's a reasonable time frame for them to 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 action, take action on this uh, as quickly as possible? Because this is something that you're experiencing very often now. Your normal operation. So once it's identified as a as a reoccurring issue, it, it needs to be addressed. And and the the funding, of course, that's that is the reason why these these are long term um, funding options are available to public water systems because your your rate base you know contributes when you what you know what uh, and, and I believe you had a, a rate evaluation recently as well. But you can finance these things over 20 years. And uh, which will allow you to, to invest in the uh, in the infrastructure. So that's what those programs are for. Can the state focus. help build up a project plan to hold us hold the town or the town accountable to a time frame? Yes, uh, and you've just done an asset management study which prioritizes uh, some of the uh, capital improvements that, that need to be. It does, however, the time frames that we continue to hear, um, you know, we're 130 plus days from, you know, this current cycle, um, is we need to look into it, it takes time. So how can we help 
actuate? Like, what do we need to do as residents to help get some of this stuff actuated? I think you have been doing it. The complaints that we receive help uh, shed light on, okay. what, on what the issues are. And so, just continue again, to this them. is what, yeah, to keep, to okay. keep close communications again. All of this is helpful. Just so you know on that, one final comment. Um, we've already looked into the cost factor. And I think it's 230,000. 230,000. 230,000. We've already got a cost. We've already talked to some people about it. It's a matter of the financing. I think I brought this up for the last week. And we've looked into the finance, and that's how we know what the cost factors are. Um, just so it's a question of... So it's not been... We got in a few months ago. It's not like we've been asleep to switch. This no. is one of the many things that has come up. Um, go ahead. We're going to have to recess so that we can talk to our auditor. Few minutes. Please stay, stay around in the hallway, and we will come back and let you go through comments again. Okay. Our, our very final thing is that the inspection no, no, to done stay. today. <laughs> they have some um, the, the inspection oh, today to will we will follow okay. up with a letter yes. that will be okay. public okay. information. Right. And so we provide our recommendations in writing from yeah. from today's. So we, I, I, I can stay, Cindy. If you want to go home, you can go. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to make a motion that we go into non-public session. You got to hear this. Pursuant to RSA 91A3, Roman numeral 2A personnel, and 91A3 C, matters that would affect the reputation of the person other than a member of the board to discuss the finding of a 2018 audit. Do I hear a second? Second. Do I hear a vote? Oh, all in favor. some rather serious information provided. I will read to you from one section of the management report. Improper controls over budgetary transactions. Government financial accounting standards require an organization to compare their year-end information to budgetary information. Due to the lack of controls, Actual expenditures exceeded appropriations by approximately $25,000. The district needs to control expenditures and stay within the approved budget as voted by the annual meeting. Monthly budgetary reports should be prepared, and they are now. To actual expenses, this will give the commissioners the ability to control spending throughout the year. In investigating it, we find that this violates RSA 32, and if the commissioners who prepared the budget for 2018 were still in office, a petition would be placed before the Superior Court to remove them from office, which is provided in RSA 32. Unfortunately, or fortunately, they're not in office right now. Because it violated RSA 32, a referral to the Attorney General's office will be made, as well as potentially to law enforcement, because this was a law broken. As commissioners, our current commissioners, and we discussed this, we are going to have to take a very long, hard, cold look at the accounting process that's going on to identify any weaknesses that might cause this to reoccur. And we are going to make such adjustments in procedure and staff as necessary in order to ensure that this never happens again under our election oversight. Do you have any questions? Yes, Frank. Yes, Frank. I, I would caution you to be careful what you say at this point. Okay, go ahead. Is that, Is that a threat? No, it's a piece of good advice. Okay, so if we expend, if we exceeded the budget, how come our, our how come the, how, how come she didn't know about it, I didn't know about it, how come the budget numbers were improper controls? Budget amount. 
year budget, we had so much expenditure since the year budget. budget. The end of the year budget was not off by $25,000. As a matter of fact, we didn't spend the full year budget. Yes, you did. Are you arguing with the auditor? I'd like to see the report. Yeah. Here you go. Can I take that home? Yes, you may. Thank you. Have, you, seen, have you seen this? No, yeah, would you well, like one too? We are going to have an electronic version of this up on the web, hopefully very soon. We also have a report here that's going to be filed probably tomorrow called the MS-535. DRA has not yet been informed of the exceedance of the budget. When they do, I'm probably going to get a very awkward phone call from Michelle Clark from DRA. Do you have any questions? What is the RA? Department of Revenue Administration. What is MS 535? It is a report that is required to be filed comparing the difference between the budget to approved budget of the voters and the actual amount of expenditures. We'll have this up on the web too. Any more questions? Was the $25,000 spent inappropriately or just in exceedance of the budget? We haven't determined that yet, but it was definitely in exceedance of the approved budget. What sections of the budget? Well, You're yeah, asking it's, part it's in several sections. So it's a cum cumulative. If you look at the 535, it shows, for example, um, sanitation exceeded its authorized budget. Uh, well, this is a lot of three categories. Was the overall budget expe uh, over yes. expended? Yes. The overall budget. The overall approved budget was approved over, budget was overexpended, which is a violation of RSA. 30. Other items were underexpended. It doesn't matter. Gotcha. Ooh. So I'd like to go back and probably clear this up. In 2018, we had hired Ray. We knew we were going to spend more, and we I thought we were told that we had. Bottom line budget authority. Is that correct? That makes sense. No, commissioners sense. actually can do line item. <laughs> but we have bottom line budget authority. Yes, so, you see that the budget. So you're, what you're saying, what you're turning into a big deal, probably isn't a big deal. Well, according to the auditor, it is. Okay, and we'll, we'll see how upset DRA gets about it. But we are going to make a referral to the Attorney General's office good. for an investigation. Very good. Any other questions? So, um, how do those rules apply to the current commission and how you're expanding within line items this year? It, it's 2018. We weren't commissioners. No, 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 I'm not talking about last year. I'm talking about this year. Do these same rules apply to how you're expending? Yes, they are. This which is year? why we're rather tight-fisted about expenditures. Um, yeah, but like within, uh, yeah, in, in terms of line items, I, I'm not entirely certain that that's true. But you know, accurate. I just, you know, I think that if there will be the same rules need to apply. RSA 32 allows year. the governing body, us. Yeah. To move money between line items. Oh, but that's not so. You're you're doing that legitimately. That's yes. acceptable. It, it's provided for in RSA 32. And that, okay, so that would apply to the previous commission as well. It goes back God knows how long. Yeah, okay. yeah. It's always been that way. So moving money around line items is acceptable. But that's really not a critical thing. But that's what I heard you say a minute ago. So I wanted to just check on that. But I, I um, I'll wait because I have a different question. I have a question. Yes. Is it factor in the Warren articles um, yes. from the previous year? Yes. 
the total budget, which is operating plus warrant articles, was exceeded by $25,000. Because once the warrant article was passed, it becomes part of the budget, the total budget. Could you tell us what line items they were? You can see the 535 in that way. It's not we don't in have there. a 535. It's not in there. Here, have the 530. You can have my copy of the 535, and you can look it up. It's only there's only three items: it's administration, sanitation, and water. Right, but those are sums from other lines. No. Right. The total budget is right. the sum of both. But there were exceedances in each of those line items, which contributed toward the exceedance for the total budget of twenty-five thousand dollars. It doesn't matter if you were under in one area and slightly over in another, if at the bottom line you exceeded your total authorized budget. Okay, so Allison, was, was your end of the year number in exceedance by $25,000? It wasn't, but I'm not going off no knowledge of any of this right now, so I can't speak to it. Right. So we should, we should probably be able to see this, right? See what? What did they pull things into the next year or no? They 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 exceeded the budget by twenty five thousand dollars. That's all well, I can say at this point. Well, the reason I'm bringing that in up is because we met with the accountant before the end of the year, Doesn't and count. he and that I'm sorry, the auditor that wrote this report. Yes, and he told us to pay checks in January because we hadn't spent enough. All right. So we had a bunch of checks that we paid ahead because we hadn't spent enough. This doesn't account for adjusting entries at the end of the year between years. After those adjusting entries and corrections for timing, the budget was still exceeded by $25,000. So it could be a timing issue. No, it is not a timing issue. From the year before? No. Income. Yeah, did you do offsetting income? Yes. The budget was exceeded by $25,000. How much income was exceeded? It doesn't matter what the income is, it's what is the authorized budget. And the budget was exceeded, the approved budget the voters voted on was exceeded by $25,000. Well, I'm going to want to talk to the as well. Because that was the information that was given to us to do at that point. I have an auditor's report and I have a 535. It's going to DRA. That's fine. They will decide whether or not any prosecutorial active activities have to take place. Yeah, and the other commissioners are Danny and. Um, yeah, I, had, I had an audit done on May 11th, the day that we left, for me and Jamie and Danny. Yeah, we didn't get an audit report. Yes, they have. There is an auditor's report, an interim report yes. of cash and expense position as of May 11th, and it balanced. It was done, apparently, I assume, after that. Yeah, we didn't get that report until after I left. We were still waiting for it. It's at the district. There's a copy of it. We can send you a copy if you really want one. Let's go on to comments from the public about the, uh, DES. Well, we Shall don't we? want. We don't want. Let's, 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 oh, oh, we don't want comments from the public about us. No, no, okay. no. Okay. no, no. All right. About your All right. presentation, Brian. Uh, I will offer. Uh, uh, that if I'm willing to, we're willing to come back anytime. Okay? If that's going to help, uh, I think it's, you know. So I make that offer. You know, at, at the, you know, my okay. meeting. You know, I gotcha. Okay. We don't make it have it you know, unless <laughs> unless I have a tab open down below. <laughs> by, the way, by the way, if you're going to go down into the canteen, you have to be signed in by a member. Well, no, they, they we are members. members. Right. I'm not a member. They let me in, too. I know. There's and then I met, standards are kind of low. And I met someone I know at the bar, too. <laughs> probably, that person probably signed you in. <laughs> oh, no. Just my second. Bird, may I ask a question about general operations? It doesn't have to do with DES. Um, it 
has to do with um, notification processes for the district. What um, notification? That's actually kind of the question. Like if, um, say, there's an E. coli problem or an interruption of service due to construction or um, there's flushing of the mains. Do we, does the Water Commission or the Water Sewer District have a, a, a notification system to village customers? Generally, in the past, what was done when there was flushing, and they knew that would grab up the water, is they would put it on the bill. So the flushing was done after the bill went out. So now you've got an angry customer with the bill, right. and now the water gets roiled up. Right. Um, beyond that, it's just notifications, you know, at the town hall and at the post office and online as possible. Uh, just to let you know, uh, from the DES, this is something uh, we we talked about again on the sanitary survey in your emergency plan uh, to have a a protocol uh, and you know a standard operating procedures. Okay, if like if there was an E. coli, you know, the, the DES requires. We within know. 24 hour notification. Right. Um, yeah, if there's a water main break, again, this is, we don't require it, but, you know, maybe have a protocol in your emergency plan of, okay, this is what we would do, type of, you know, so that everybody would understand and then anybody could follow it. We share an emergency protocol with the police department who has overall uh, authority in that area. So and I'm sure there's an entire section about notification for, like, Water system failures, electrical, you know, massive right. How do you do things it? like that. Do you get the notices? You have a right there are notification rules in our maintenance and operational rules, so that is so yeah. we can send. You can point you to those because if it's a planned flushing, there's a, a timeline to give prior. If it's an emergency flushing, you can't, but but you know as soon as after forgiveness. Like it's in the rule. The best thing would put in the uh, you know having protocol of what steps to follow. That, you know, so anybody could, you know, both the commissions understand, and the operator would know, and then the public would know. So the commission was all along? Yeah. The general rule is more notification is better than less. Yeah, I get the Nixel stuff in the town, but it doesn't tend to include water. That's the Nixel? But can ask them to. Okay. okay. That's and not everybody's on the email blast from the town's website either. Right. So it's like... You basically plaster the town with notifications. Right. Just wondering if there was a, a process in place. There were recent we'll, other towns. We'll do everything we can to notify everybody. But, you know, somebody's going to get missed. We know that. I don't go to the post office. I don't yeah, have a computer and look at those notices. Somebody's going to get missed. I totally agree. Just didn't know if there was a systematic way, or like these guys are saying, an emergency protocol that does um, list out what the process is. Yes. Speaking of computers, yes. the only reason I come to these meetings was because of the website. Kate, Yo. how much do we pay that guy who does the website? Uh, $100? 50 bucks a month. 50 bucks a month. Someone long ago did not know anything about computers and decided we wanted a website. So they went out and they got this guy who lives in Dover. Uh, and they said, we need a website. And he said, oh my gosh, this is the best day of my life. I'm going to scam these people. So we've been paying him fifty dollars a month. No, he wait, went wait. Out. did he actually say I'm going to scam these people? I wasn't there. He okay. went out and he paid a website called, I believe it's Hostgator, probably about thirty dollars to get probably a three-year hosting license, and then we purchased a domain, or we probably leased the domain. That's independent of what he does. So we're paying him fifty dollars a month that he has just put in his pocket because he already bought a three-year term back when this was uh, set inside. So what I would say is, go tell that guy I'm not going to pay you anymore, and then ask for the login credentials to HostGator, because he's not doing anything. Well, we found an interesting thing. <clears throat> WordPress is not connected to our website, watersewer.org. Although it, it's capable of doing that, I have no idea where that page is coming from. Watersewer.org was a domain that was purchased and is hosted by HostGator. We own and control RollinsfordWaterSewer.org. Yes. We own it and we control That's it. That's a domain. Yes. It's hosted by HostGator. No, it's to, not. Yes, it's it by is. Namecheap. I have the credentials. I can see where it is. 
Okay, it has to be hosted somewhere. It is. It's hosted on Namecheap. I have no idea that's, how they make that connection. That's a domain. A domain is a Namecheap, and then you go to the, the... And we're going to get that straightened out. The HostGator references the domain. Probably. Yes, it does. So what okay. I'm saying is we've already paid for the licensing probably up for three years. Well, someone did. We gave him 50 bucks a month. He went and paid it, and now he pockets it every night for the next, you know, three years. So you could just get the credentials from him and just stop paying him, and the website would not go away. It would still be hosted on HostGator. Okay. We have a number of things we're going to clarify, including the Facebook page. That's going to come under the commissioner's control now, as well as the website. Okay, the Facebook page is free. I'm just talking about, I know this is small know. potatoes. We're, going, we're, we're talking about some money we don't have. We've got $50 a month that could be coming, like we're paying for some feet of pipe there. We're, that's like 147 a month list of things to do. Okay, I'm saying it's uh, just I email. Understand. They'll take an email to fix. I agree. I understand. And as soon as we get control of that and we offer it, we'll go from there. You just got to go ask him. I, sometimes they don't give it up that easily. Yes. I have emailed him, by the way, and said, I, you need to talk to me about... Yeah, I saw he levels. charged you like $100 for consulting. We're working on it. Okay. Like I said, it's 147 on my list of things to do. Yes, Brian. You yes. need to patch that cavernous hole at the start of Lower Main Street. <laughs> That's a whole separate issue. Okay. <laughs> just a quick follow-up. Uh, you just mentioned that the commissioners are going to say direct control of the website and Facebook page. Legally, yes. I, I mean, I'm not going to be doing it. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, just I have to do programming. So yeah. you will not be the ones no. updating it. Oh, no, 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 no. no, 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 no. Okay. We will find someone reliable and local just, that I can just want to reach out and actually touch and say, now I need this article to go in, please. And if you want to have a conversation anytime about who should be paying to uh, I, uh, fix Lower Mill Road, I'm available anytime. <laughs> we, we, I, I, I don't think you would like the answer, though. So. <laughs> As part of the lack of controls, we had stuff spattered all over the place, including the web page, the domain name. Facebook, all that stuff got sort of pushed out into other areas and it's going to go back under the commissioner's control. Okay. Okay? I don't need to sound iron fisted, but we've got to get some controls going here. Yes? Um, I was curious about the op open operator position and if you've had any. We're working interest on it. Actually, I've any... had two phone calls today about that. But I can't tell you anything more than that. Okay, no, I just wanted to know if anyone had even inquired. Thank you. Just Yes. So um, I have a question for the commission, but I also have a question for DES. Um, at the point at which this project comes to fruition, the short-term solution for Willie Street, are there some protocols or guidelines around what that request for bid needs to look like and how that gets done by, um, by our district? Are you talking about the long-term? No, I said short-term. I'm, I'm There's no good process for that. I'm sorry? We cure the problem. So the maintenance The maintenance issues are something that you guys do internally. You just break like the flushing and, mm -hmm. and so maintenance items you do on your own. But if there are capital improvements, modifications, those do get approved by DES. Right. And That's then right. the bidding process, so the design itself does need to be approved by the state. The bidding process depends on your funding source. So if you're funded through rural development or SRF or whatever funding, they will dictate what the bidding process is. Okay. Those rules. Okay. Yeah, I was asking for the okay. yeah. So my other question was about the pump gallon and where we are with the, the work on the pump gallon. We are investigating a solution for that, and that's all I can tell you at this point. Right. We're is investigating it, is it a this secret? Field. Is it personnel related? No, it has to do with, well, sort of in a way. Budget. With what? Well, it's just, I thought that everything that needs to be public that isn't. It's got to do with the budget. budget. It's got to do with the budget. But that's our budget as a. Yes, no. it is. It is. At this point, I have nothing to report to you. That's basically what So is there a meeting of the commissioners where we'll we be can't able to... We can't meet unless we have a public meeting. 
Right. Which is why we can't meet with Ray because it's a public, got to be a public meeting. Right, absolutely. We can't have a staff meeting. Right. Well, well that's okay. prior commissioners did, and it was no big deal. I think you brought that upon yourself. However, no. No. the question okay. about the... Okay. No, but... Moving on. We, we can't, we can't explain okay. everything. But there's right to know things. If you, if, yeah. What is the progress of the pump alley? Right now, we're investigating the history of the maintenance records that were done by prior superintendents. Okay, above and beyond what Hoyle Tanner shared with you. I'm sorry? Above and beyond what Hoyle Tanner shared with you. Oh, yes. Okay. The funds have been appropriated. The what? voters approved that project, and so no. the Pump Gallon project. No. The voters authorized the commissioners to expend funds. Okay? We're not obligated to spend money. Okay? And the risk to that is? Pardon? The risk to not spending the money is what? The risk? What is the risk to not taking care of the problem? It may be that it actually will cost us considerably more than the fifty thousand. Why is that? Because both Wright Pierce and HCA both estimated the cost at one hundred and fifty thousand, not fifty. Now I have to reconcile that fifty thousand with Wright Pierce and HCA, which requires investigating. That's number 87 on my list. I, what's number one? <laughs> <laughs> Did another report come out from Wright Pierce that we haven't seen? When we had the um, thing with John Jackman, the workshop with John Jackman, John Jackman said he talked with Wright Pierce and they both agreed, both Wright Pierce and HCA agreed, to do the pump galley would cost their rough and dirty estimate was $150,000. What happened to the what happened to the $50,000 estimate that we sat down and, and looked if you at? Were doing it in right Pierce is now saying, saying just right Pierce is now saying 150. You so were was HDA. Well, you were using in, inside work. Actually, maybe, maybe Ray knows the answer. Right. Do you know it's, it's, can you help us? Like the difference it, is we have conflicting the, information. Yeah, well, let's, 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 let's try to get to the bottom of it, right? Right, and so we're going to talk to the engineers again and say, now give us a hard number, because we can't proceed without a hard number. We did that during the workshop, though. John Jackman agreed with Wright Pierce's estimate that if we went out to bid, it would cost $150,000. Right. But he also agreed that I could do the project in-house for the $50,000. No. Absolutely. No. 100% he did. He did. That. The exact quote was, Ray says he can do it for $50,000, which is not the same as, we agree that Ray is competent and capable and able he was to do very this job. He didn't specific. say that. Yes, he did. He We're said, going to do further investigating. That's it. We're not going any further until we do further investigating. You've got to be sure about what we're doing. Because that pump room is the heart of the wastewater system. Yeah, right. and if by you try to do something and it goes bad, it's going to go disastrously bad. And we want to make sure it doesn't go disastrously bad. Yep. Captain of Zelly 464 Stockdale. And it sounds like Ray has the knowledge to do it in house. Your, your employee is saying that he could do it in house. So you're doubting his knowledge by saying we gotta go further. If a boss said that to an employee, that that would be like an, an employee that is incapable of doing the job. The thought of the boss that that would ruin trust between A and B, right? Okay. So I don't understand why you are not competent in your employee. We have three 
numbers from three different sources. We want to reconcile those three different numbers and get the hard number that we need. One of them is 50,000. Okay. One of them is 150,000 from two different sources. Okay. We learned a long time ago, you don't always go with the lowest bid. <coughs> Sometimes that gets you in trouble. Yes. And we can tell you the story of the wastewater system we installed in downtown and the anguish we went through because we picked the lowest bid. But we're going to get more information. You're not comparing, comparing apples to apples, 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 though, because you're I'm comparing, trying to respond. But you're comparing an in-house quote to going outsource in the inflation of hiring a subcontractor to do the project. The reason we can save the money in-house is because we can we can provide all the services in-house. We don't have to have multiple contractors come in. It, this has already been discussed, and, and I'm going to send an email to John Jackman in the morning to clarify, because his words at the workshop I was, there. was, I agree that Ray can do the project for $50,000. So, I, I we'll get clarification on that tomorrow. We, I, I remember it slightly differently. We need to do more investigating. And we're saying, we need to be careful. We're just being prudent and cautious. And that's what we've got to well, do. Well, they've sent memorandums regarding if we're not I moving know. forward in the basement, then we need replacement parts for the pumps that exist because we do not have them in stock. We don't need them in stock. John England refurbished so, well, those pumps in the early part, about two months before you were hired. Yeah, okay. And they did not wear out in two years. So, so it's another point? decision that you're making as a non-licensed operator. I'm saying I have information that conflicts with what you're saying. Yeah. I need to investigate it further. I'm trying to do the prudent and careful thing. We discussed thing. that pump one's leaking. You're aware of that? Yes, I am. Okay. okay. And pump two has, has bound up twice now. I've done emergency repairs and I've been able to get it functioning again, just so we're clear. And I do not have the parts to replace the lobes inside the rotary load pump for our RAS pump. I understand. Okay. We are investigating the details. Just want to make sure we're clear. So are we this, this is not a commissioner's versus right situation. This is a commissioner's trying to get informed and get complete information. If these pumps so we can make will the we best have water? Yes, so we can make the best water. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Hey, if these pumps fail, will these good people have sewer? Yeah, they'll have it. You know, we'll we'll have it all right. <laughs> there, there, there's, there's, <laughs> so given that, acknowledging that you guys have a lot on your plate, right? You yes, talked about we do. 187 things on the list. Well, actually, it's just more than that. It's just that the, that's, that's where that thing was 187. Right. Can you, can you share with us just the top, like between now and I, you're going to establish the next session, um, what are the top three to five things that you guys are... Top is we've got to, we've got, it is our obligation as commissioners <laughs> and it is in the law to, ins, to supervise the appropriate, I'm trying to remember the exact wording, to supervise the appropriate financial controls to see to it that the money that is publicly is provided publicly is spent appropriately and legally. Okay, so administrative process for finance. What about the quality of water or sewer? Is there any any That's up in there. the top priorities? I, I, it's like uh, for me it might be four, for Bob it might be seven. I mean, but you guys need to be aligned, right? Well, I think for the most part. People in town will turn around and say, yeah, go ahead and pull on a million dollars. We can take everything that's like that. Would you vote uh -huh. for that at this point in time? Didn't we vote to raise money? We voted. We can take care of the wells. We can take care of the piping. We can take care of the wastewater treatment plant. We can take care of everything. Well, what are you doing about the rates? I mean, we've been waiting for well, that, what? too. So, for Clem. Oh, that's well, number we're seven. That now. That's we're seven. That's so top seven. ten. We have a prototype rate structure that's based well, not yeah. on... 15,000 and so forth, but on actual consumption. So ideal state well, plan, we're waiting, yes. We were waiting for the audit report to come in to see where we stood. Okay, so you have a 25,000 And the recommendations that were being made, and we're going to take a look at those recommendations that were made that happened to just receive the money. So the auditor is right? going to dictate what we do no, technically. No, he's not dictating. He's making... He's going to inform what we do technically to our water no, and sewer? No, no, He tells us financially what we do. If our finances are in disarray, 
we can't do the rest of it. Okay, so that's number one. You're going to yeah. work through the finances. But what, what are the immediate actions that the commissioners are going to take to work towards water and sewer improvements that are prioritized? We're not going to have an absolute priority list. We're trying to deal with all of them as they... As they become an emergency? No, as they become... As we have more data, as we seek more data, as we start to implement plans. We don't have any in four months. Uh, I'll be in three months. It'll be in four months. Yeah, a third I mean, of the term. I mean, I come mean, on, guys. Where the It's a third of the term. We, we, we can't address everything all at once. That's why I'm asking what your priorities are so that we can understand. Yeah, so we know it's bad. We'll put on a list so you'll know. You know, you asked me this one of the first things we had a meeting in here. And I gave you a list. And one of the things was to clarify. Because. My superintendent told me two days before that meeting that clarified it did not work and would not be fixed. Yep. And then he came in that day, and after I told you that was number one because we can't keep setting pollution on, yep. then I was told, oh, he fixed it. I didn't even know that until the end. So when we get in here, we need the data. So I gave you a list of things that I thought you asked me specifically yep. what I thought, and that clarifier was number one because there's no backup. Okay? Yeah. So when we come in and I ask for a report on something and it doesn't come in two months after it's due yet, you know, I'm, I'm swinging on getting my own data and so are the rest of them here. So when you hear the safety mess, keep that in mind. There's two sides of every story here. I, and as far as the priority is concerned, Willie Street wasn't even on the list. No one even talked about it when we came in. Willie Street became a big issue within the past two months, and that's when we started working on it. You can't work on everything at once. It's a priority thing. I, I, I'm not disagreeing with that. So, problem. you but know, I'm right now, the big, in my mind, is Willie Street. That's what all this discussion has been about. And anything more is just an attempt to see what kind of pain we can get in on here. Okay. Ask an honest question. That's great that you got your answer. No, actually, I didn't. The priorities actually shift from day to day because things happen. I know, but you guys keep taking the can down the street. So We're not taking the can down the road. We try to address them as they become emergent. We do the best we can with we three do. people who earn a thousand bucks a year. All right, we're elected officials. Mm -hmm. We don't. Have, we have a limited amount of authority. And you guys we can't fix things. everything at once. But you're not being collaborative, which is what's... Well, then next year, my slot comes up, feel free to run for it, and you can take over and cure all of this. That's all, all, right, right. all right, right now, you got to calm down. <laughs> Don't make me get the dark gun. I think two of the three of you come up. No, I got, I'm you? up in the three Clem years. Clem and Bob come up. Yes. Yep. Two all right. Three. Okay. Okay, two, right. three. Right. Yep. Oh, no, you're not. <laughs> right. here with the we have to set a meeting. But we don't want to do two of them in August. Hey. <laughs> 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 I'm And the 28th, which is the fourth Wednesday. I may have been working with the 28th. Okay. Can you do those two Wednesdays? I can do the first Wednesday. All right. Well, we can form some of the things that are going on. Where are your people going? We haven't adjourned. All right. So the next meeting. Will be the 14th of August followed by the 28th of August. Okay? Everybody got that? Good. I will make a motion to adjourn. Second. Okay.
different letter, which is the most important part of this. And it is the financial 